Zane, you're one of our uh, alumni of the Physical Performance Show. We've 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 featured you now on numerous episodes, starting back on episode 170, July 2019, just before you ran here on the Gold Coast at the Gold Coast Marathon. Then again, uh, live from Ethiopia, uh, February 2020, episode 203, and then yourself and Jake, uh, your brother, of course, back on episode 211, April 2020. So just as the pandemic was in full swing. And obviously, uh, this reunion for us on the show, at least, is, um, you know, it's it's been a, a very challenging last 48 hours. And uh, as a friend of yours, uh, I reached out just to check on your welfare. And the decision was made that this may be, a, you know, a, a safe, if you like, platform just to tell tell the story of what's happened uh, with this uh with this doping violation. So Zane, can you take us through what, you know, what, what's been happening since 2020 at the start where it was meant to be the Olympic year. I was out there assisting uh, via athletics, New Zealand with some physiotherapy for you. And, and I saw firsthand, I had my first time experience in East Africa and I would probably sum it up as one word and one word. And that was, it was intense. It was just an intense place, uh, <laughs> culture shock. So Zane, Take us through what's been happening and obviously we're going to dive into the, the situation. Yeah, well, you sure got that right about intense spread. Um, out here, it's the wild, wild west and um, especially in the sporting culture. But um, yeah, so taking you back to 2020, um, I just run the LA Marathon with a stress fracture in my femur and that wasn't so much fun. Um Came through the COVID era and I was actually trapped in New Zealand for six months, spending my um, life savings on things like rent. And uh, it's it's not so easy for an athlete to be paying all these things out of their out of their hard earned race winnings and stuff like this. Um, I was actually married at the time also, and that that COVID era led to um, more and more fights and. It was it wasn't a good marriage. It was a very short marriage. It was less than a year, and um, I had to go through a very violent, um, very emotional, I would say, mental abusive relationship and manipulative relationship. And um, by the end of it all, when I came back to East Africa, I was just so ready to try and move on with my life and. Um, there were a lot of things that I faced later on, such as attempted murder and uh, hit men were hired and in the capital here in Kenya. Um, I'd moved back to Kenya and um, some hit men were hired to try and kill me. So I was put into such of something like witness protection or um, just just safe holding. This was while I was in the build up to the um, Olympics in Tokyo or the Sapporo Marathon, and um, I mean just just the stress itself of um, trying to be a professional athlete at such a high level for so many years, and your companies are expecting you to be a medalist in the Olympics. And I knew I knew I spent a lot of money on traveling around to hot places and training and. I, I invested so much into that myself that I just, um, I lost even a part of myself, you know, and, um, when I, when I failed in the Olympics, when I, I really put myself out there with the lead group and I burned in the last 10 K, I can't remember it to this day. I think that was a, a major detrimental point to me where I just felt like completely alone after the Olympics. I was left alone again to train alone without support. Once I'd finished the Olympics, uh, one of my companies told me directly, um, not even beating around the bush, just straight up, we thought you would run better. And they dropped me immediately. So that was one source of my income as a, as a person. And the other company were not far off. I had pressure from management, pressure from shoe companies, pressure from uh you know the shoes constantly i was getting injured i couldn't finish a race i trained for my next marathon and um i was getting cramps by 17k and it forced me to dnf by 25k i i was just seeing like the tunnel was getting a lot smaller and there was no way out 
there was no, <laughs> you know, the COVID era wiped out a lot of money and a lot of appearance fees and things that you can live off um, as a professional athlete in the sport. And my my tunnel was getting smaller and um, towards the towards May and just last year is when I made a big decision and um, I was facing a lot of frustration, anger, sadness in the last few years and I'd been talking to a psychiatrist and um, contemplating a lot of things, um, not not happy things, just like around life itself and um, the meaning of why I'm here. And um, it, it ultimately led me to making one of the worst decisions I've made. And um, and that's that's the news we're facing today. Oh gosh, thanks for the chronology there, Zane. Uh, you mentioned there, just backing up, you the Olympic campaign, it was obviously not your standard Olympics. Uh, the marathon wasn't. <laughs> In Tokyo, it was moved to Sapporo. It was hot. It was it was seemingly strange conditions where you warmed up with the the, the pre race uh, it was quarantine situation. It was very different. And then obviously, uh, you used to come to heat, heat illness off the back of that. Uh, those that saw you finish saw that you're in distress, and it was quite uh, quite scary to watch you finish. Um, and and off the back of that, I know at one point you'd indicated to me getting back into that marathon, you just felt fried, like your body hadn't recovered, but you're under pressure to try and run it from a, an economic point of view, financially, to try and keep a contract and keep a sponsor happy. Yeah. I mean, you, you have certain clauses in your contract where you have to p- perform in so many races per year. And um, it's, it's so sad that now to even run a marathon, you have to spend your own money to in the build up. And normally the appearance fee, there used to be something called an appearance fee where you would get paid money to sh- show up and start races. And if you DNF'd, you'd get taken 50% off that, um, which is acceptable. But also it means that you get something at the end of the day. And now there's nothing like that. So we're showing up for free, running for top three position, which it was in Los Angeles, and if you don't finish in the top three, you're not going to get any prize money. And that's like the situation I was in. And I realized by 17K, this isn't normal. Um, these cramps is definitely not something normal. And to this day, I don't know what that was. But um, I, I do understand that when your electrolyte balance in the body is not okay, it means there's something wrong with your kidneys. And that could have definitely came from running in such conditions like in the Olympics. Gosh, you know, you use the phrase the tunnel was getting smaller. Do you mean the tunnel on your career or the tunnel of opportunity or the what did you mean by that? I think I'm in the tunnel of life. Um, everything to me, I mean, running was my life part of it. And it was it was my income to support myself as well. Um I there were many times where I was talking about just ending it all, just um, offing myself. I had many options available to me of how, and um, I still have like the, I still have these problems to face today. But I'm trying to work through them in a in a healthier way. Um, yesterday wasn't such a good day for me. Um, I think just talking to people like yourself and Dom, it's why I chose you guys because you know you're you can make me feel like a human being first and not an athlete and like that life it has so much more meaning than just sport. It's not like I went out there and murdered a bunch of people, but because professional athletes are put on that, that you, we just put on blast as soon as we do something wrong rather than people sympathizing like that, like maybe, maybe everyone makes mistakes and maybe Zane feels horrible himself about it, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's obviously no one's going to condone doping, but there's not a soul on earth that can't reflect on their failures in some way and their their embarrassments. And and most would be most of us would be you know embarrassed to have some of our mistakes uh, broadcast. But I guess the benefit we mostly have uh, is we're anonymous. But obviously, if you're in the spotlight, you don't get that you don't get that um, that luxury. Um, you know, and you use the word Zane towards May 2022. Three emotions were there: frustration, anger, sadness. 
what was the fr- was the frustration just as you've mentioned financial opportunities shrinking performance is not going the way you wanted anything else that you were frustrated about yeah i think frustration on the state of the sport um i mean at the end of top elite sports if you haven't been there you won't understand but it's the same everywhere there's there's a saying the level playing field and there's no such thing there's those that do and those that don't and i was i was so fed up after all the years all the shit and just seeing people that i used to whoop just come and destroy me and then my companies and contracts pulling out and i was like okay well i'm i'm at the end here and maybe i should have just retired but because I didn't love the professional end of the sport anymore, but I didn't, I made a bad choice and I just thought, well, why don't I become one that that does instead of one that doesn't. And, um, of course I'm full of regret now. Um, and we'll dive into the timeline a bit Zane, but frustration with the, you know, with the state of the sport, those that have followed your career, you know, certainly know that you've been, vocal uh, of some of your frustrations around the sport in the past uh that's not new news for anyone i mean is it in your view is it possible to win a world major marathon or a championship run and not be doping in the sport Mm, i think yeah exactly what you said about everyone who knows me or knows of my career and i've been vocal I think they know my answer to these things or that question. I have to tiptoe on eggshells my whole life um, for certain reasons. And that's why I've given certain answers in the past around that topic. And I think that's what I have to do here. I just have to tread carefully because um, I can and can't say some things. But honestly, if I have to just give you a straightforward answer, then it's then it's No. There's obviously been plenty of speculation from the running community, the media around East Africa in general uh, with running. And as you stop and think about it, you realize that there's seemingly too much to lose for too many people. If the empire caught that was to come crashing down. (laughs) Uh, I mean, uh, it feels a little bit to me like cycling was a few decades ago where it's like, where do we start here? I I think individual sport on its own, cycling, running, I think it's um it's a, there's a huge heavy burden on everyone's shoulders because everyone's out there for themselves. There's no teammates to fall back on when you don't perform. And and also when you do perform or when you don't, and then you have these things like if you are caught on drugs, like like you, you just face, you just face a whole lot more. And I think that, I think we're, we're laid out to be scapegoats for all the other like sports out there. Team sports don't have the pressure that we have. Um, and I mean, I don't have a history of this and I'm, I was vocal about it and I still have those beliefs. And that, that was my huge frustration over, over many years and and it made me sad it made me depressed and all these other things adding to it i'm not condoning what i did but i'm i'm just trying to share my story and hopefully get um some understanding around why why i made the decision that i did i mean in every context is always key uh for understanding situations and you know that old that old maxim seek first to understand i mean it applies in every situation I know over the years, my views on certain things have changed and there's always the moral outrage, which I totally get. We, you know, ethically people feel challenged that someone could cheat. Um, but it's interesting if you then stop and think about situations and Zane, I remember reading, uh, Tyler Hamilton's book, The Hidden Race, when I was, uh, just turned, I was 32 and I spent my whole junior life looking at uh the uh you know the cycling world and idolizing some of the you know the heroes there uh and i was just devastated to read tyler's book and it it really hit me when as a 19 year old you know tyler hamilton writes about the situation that led to him making poor decisions 
And I actually reflected and went, if I'm honest with myself here and I was Tyler in that situation, I would have done the same thing. If I was in the same situation, in the same contextual space uh, as a 19-year-old kid trying to make it and you've been told by seniors to, you know, to do this, do that. And that actually really, really challenged me because uh, up to that point, I'd thought, oh, no, I'd, you know, I'd never cheat. But then I realized, well, I still haven't taken, you know, drugs in sport and I'm not trying to make a living out of it, but, and I wouldn't. But um, if you were Tyler Hamilton, most people probably would have done the exact same thing he did as a rational human being. So I think context is key. It's certainly not, you know, uh, condoning what's happened here, but I think it's, it's an important point to raise. Zane, the other two emotions you said were boiling around in May 2022 were anger and sadness. Was the anger just your personal situation? Obviously, you mentioned you were going through relational turmoil at the time. Um, and was it, I guess, still the anger with the sport at large? Yeah, yeah. Anger from different angles of it. Just anger of um, seeing, kind, kind of feeling left behind. Um, for so many years, I'd lost a lot, you know. I've, I've lost a lot of medals that should be different colours, a lot of prize money, a lot of contract value, a lot of things through the sport. And it's, it's the doers or the donters and... That was that was one major factor of the anger. The other anger was not being able to just just be myself on many topics or many things because of the relationship I was in and um, pressures of society trying to trying to make me some way. And and I knew that if I carry on like this, then I eventually will never have a family or not be able to have a family or a life outside of this sport. And, and that's, that's the sad state it's become. And that led to a little bit more of the sadness that after all these years out here, um, I don't really have any, um, any real, real down to earth friends except for my brother in laws. Um, and, and my friends are very far away. So I lacked a lot of support emotionally when I needed it. And um, I think that's why that rabbit hole was getting a lot a lot smaller for me yeah so that's the sadness and the anger and the frustration uh and then the me mechanics of the situation zayna you know news broke australian time wednesday morning i had people sending me links but the the, the timeline around you know what you've labeled as a poor decision can you just walk through the chronology of it zayna you'd mentioned to me when I reached out just to check on you, uh, you know, as, as a friend that uh, you were at the Sydney Marathon when the night before the race you were informed. Yeah, so I was um, I was in Sydney to do the pacing duties, and I um, I honestly was in quite quite good condition to do so. The uh, about mid morning, the day before the race, um, someone came to my door and notified me, took me out of the room. And that's when I got the notification about um, failing the test and um, pretty much laid it on me that the B sample we tested and that um, I'm facing a four year ban and immediate suspension and these, and these things of such. I mean, to me, four years, eight years, it's the same thing. Um, that's just, that's basically to me a life ban anyway. There's, it's pretty hard to come back from that mentally or emotionally or if even races would want to have you again. And um, I can't see past tomorrow right now anyway. But that, I guess that's why I'm just, I just want to own up now about trying to save my own ass and what was written about me and such. I mean, if you were in my shoes facing, facing that four years and thinking that your career – the last 16 years of your life, you've worked for it. Would you try and save your ass? Um, some people might say no, but they're not thinking from my perspective. I really, I really just tried to save my own ass and I'm trying to own up to that now. And the motivation, Zane, to own up to that now is, is what? Well, now that everyone knows anyway, there's no point to trying to save my own ass because it's all news. I just want 
to get my side of the story out there so people can hear it. And um, I mean, thankfully, I have a lot of supportive people coming to my ear and coming to my corner. And I will get back to everyone who's messaged me in such a way. And um, no, I will try not to get back to anyone who's messaged me another way. And um, honestly, like the people who do message me the other way, say like if if their family member went and murdered someone, does that mean they're a murderer as well? So just leave my family alone as well. Um, they had nothing to do with this. So stop commenting on their walls, please. It's not fair. You specifically, Zane, me and Jake? Yeah, yeah, I do. He's he's going through a lot right now and and directly it makes me feel worse and it's horrible what he has to go through now because of me and it's it's not fair. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, Jake just ran, what, 60.04 in, a, in the hard conditions in Portugal, so he's in kind of a sweet spot in his performance career-wise. Oh uh, yeah, I mean he's probably one of the one of the best non East Africans right now in the half marathon, if not the best ever, because of consistent performances. And um, I know he's due for a massive breakthrough. I knew he was close to a fifty nine zero performance in Lisbon. Um, he's in the shape to do so, so I'm just hoping that that could be anywhere soon. He just needs to get lucky with the weather. Gosh, and. Zane, who knocked on the door in Sydney to notify you? Um, they're the agency from New Zealand, the DF, uh, Drug Free Sport New Zealand. Um, a person from there came to notify me and basically just laid out my rights. And I think uh, I didn't sleep one minute that night. And um, it, it led to obviously not being able to complete the pacing duties that I'd set out to do. Yeah, in the in the Sydney Marathon. Uh, and they mentioned that the B sample had been tested and you were immediately facing a four-year ban. If we rewind the clock, I mean, when did the doping take place, Zaina? Uh, in the, the test, I believe it was at the, the Great Northern Run in the UK? Uh, it was in Great Manchester Run, and so Manchester Run. just so everyone knows, this has not been, this was a one-off. This was out of desperation. This was out of depression, anger, frustration, and all the emotions that come with it. This was a one-off, and it was a trial and error. And um, the rest of my results from my career were clean. They still have my samples. I believe they're allowed to keep them for 10 years. And when new technology becomes available, they will retest my samples, especially now. And um, that's what I just have to say to all the people who believed in me as well, that um, that these samples will be retested and that all my records were clean. So to my fans as well out there, um, I'm sorry I let you down. And... Um, I'm just hoping that um, to move on from here. Yeah, I mean, certainly, plenty of people. It understandably would would question other performances across your career, and I guess that's a hard reality. Uh, once a violation's occurred, it's you know how do you compartmentalize someone's career? Uh, but you know, you're mentioning this was a a one off. It was a trial and error. It was in desperation. You've given some context. So, and you've come under criticism for the defense that you put forwards for the, the doping violation uh, around visiting a Kenya hospital. You know, you've mentioned there that who wouldn't try and save their backside if you're under the same situation four years versus eight years? It's kind of a career ender either way. Um, what would you say to those people, Zane, that in terms of their view is right? Well, his records are written off, you know, what would you say? I would just say that I worked very hard for those records and my samples are still there to be tested. So go right ahead, go ahead. Those samples are there still, nothing to hide. Um, this is a bad mistake, a single mistake, and it's it's a real shame that, my career has to end in such a way, but um, 
I'm the one who's going to have to live with these consequences, and I and I am. Yeah, um, you know, I read some commentary that some view in the immediacy of this. This has only gone live or in the media 48 hours ago, but that you've now disgraced New Zealand athletics and the New Zealand you know, national sporting Olympic movement. Uh, what would you say to that? Uh, you know that whatever that is, it's coming from a it's coming from a a righteous standpoint or a, another perspective that everyone in sport is clean and green and and it's it's again that level playing field I talked about. It's just not real at the top end of any sport. Um, people that want to believe so obviously haven't been in elite sport and people that still believe so and they are in elite sport maybe they're naive maybe they haven't been in it long enough to see the the true colors and and it's really sad it's uh, it's one of it's one of the things that frustrated me over the years and I was so real and authentic about it even when I spoke out in the Rio Olympics and um with everyone who I've ever come in contact with just one on one or personally over here um I think that's why I've had so many people re reach out to me and say that um, they they really feel for me in my position right now, and um, they're sorry I had to go through it. Um, I'm not looking for sympathy. I know I know what I did was wrong. I'm just trying to tell my story once again, and 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 try to make people understand that there are angles to this, and I, I came at it in the wrong way. And I've read that that you were targeted, if you like, by Drug Free Sport New Zealand. Can you add any insight into how that process works? No, I never feel personally offended or targeted. I uh, some some of the some of the frustrating situations when I missed a test and it was not my fault, such as the case when once I reported to Drug Free Sport New Zealand that I was in New York. These were my flights. This is my hotel. I was um, I was tested actually. I was tested the Friday morning. Um, the night after I had arrived in New York City. And at the same time, uh, World Athletics had sent testers to my house in Ethiopia. So they, you know, miss tests like this, they, they occurred. And it was ridiculous because it was the same day, the same, almost the same time. But the, the communication just broke down. And like I said, I never felt personally attacked or targeted anyone who performs good gets tested but i think drug free Sp sport new zealand take their testing regime to a next level that again isn't a level playing field because the rest of the world don't do that um i've been tested over 50 times in my career out of competition before competition even the nights before competition sometimes taking blood um, ruining my sleep at 9, 10 p.m. at night sometimes. And you have to wake up four in the morning for, for race day. Um, so it, it comes with part of the job and um, I'm not personal about it in any way. And in one of the statements, it said that they'd collaborated with the Anti-Doping Agency of Kenya as a global partnership, as in that they were liaising with a team on the ground in Kenya uh is is that who tested you in in the uk uh no i think it was uk um it was so it was united kingdom anti-doping and they just found me at the end of the race so it's completely normal procedure the grounds team here in kenya just had to look into my excuses and my um my shortcomings of an excuse of why this had happened and we've already been through that part. Yeah, it's there in the public domain to to read, and uh, many are critical that it seems so fanciful. But your response to that, you know, the the defence you'd given was that you were looking for a COVID vaccine, and instead were uh, were administered administered uh, EPO, and, and people have. Some people are very critical of that, and understandably, because it seems like a far-fetched sort of uh, situation. But your defence to that, or your perspective, Zane, is: Yep, I was trying to save my ass. In your words, 
Yeah, I mean, I'm just being real about it now because they have nothing left to hide. Mm. And um, t- t- to be fair, the reason I came up with that was because I did read, I did read that that was maybe possible, and that I was sick while I did run in Manchester. I I felt amazing about ten days out, and then about a week to go, I just hit the wall. I couldn't breathe. After 800 meters of the race, I already knew that I was done, and this was not going to be a good day for me. So, um, I, I I don't know if it was COVID. I suspect it was, but I definitely had an airways infection. So after the race, I couldn't even run for about six weeks. Um, I was, uh, yeah, not not great of health. And mechanically, Zane. If an athlete does make poor decisions, as you've said that you have done in this circumstance, how easy is it for them to access PEDS performance enhancing drugs? Um, okay, so this is another breakdown of the, the scenario I faced. Um, there was a lot of pressure also from my ex-wife and we, we also used to talk about this and how frustrated I was. So one day, one day she came home with it and said, Hey, here it is. And I held on to that for a very long time. I, I guess I didn't have, I didn't have the balls to go through with it. And I had a lot of doubts and I just thought this isn't me. And I held on to a little part of myself for a long time there. And I, when I moved to Kenya, I kept it with me and I just, I think the breaking point, it started to happen after the Olympics. I'd, I'd given everything I had out there and um, I'd given everything to the sport that I could. And um, eventually some things in the sport and some things outside the sport just it added all up to me making those, that bad, bad decision at the, at the time I did. So you mean your ex-wife <clears throat> physically brought goods home, as in PEDS, performance enhancing drugs, physically you didn't use them at the time, you held on to them, but then in a, in a low moment you succumbed to the, the temptation. Yeah, exactly. Zaina, uh, Peter Fitzinger, uh, Athletics New Zealand chief, issued a statement saying that there was concern about your mental health and that that was being taken care of. The statement read, as an organisation, Athletics New Zealand, we take athlete welfare very seriously, so we understand the anxiety and stress that Zane will be experiencing. As soon as he received notification of the positive test for EPO last year, 2022, we offered and have provided extensive wellbeing support alongside High Performance Sport New Zealand, New Zealand, and we will continue to provide support during this challenging time. We appreciate Drug Free Sport New Zealand's consideration of the athletes' well-being throughout this process. Um, yeah, so I've known Peter for a while, and they they did they did take care of me. They sent um, two representatives, um, one of the one of the psychiatrists I've been talking to, and um, also a familiar, friendly face um, who works for Athletics New Zealand were there just to support me and. Um, just make sure I didn't do anything stupid because I did consider jumping off the roof there for a, for a while. And, um, I mean, I talk openly about it, but this, this wasn't just, a, 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 a or, oh my God, all of a sudden I've been caught. This is, this was a build up of like a year or two of emotional stress, um, mental stress, fatigue, and I was just, I was so over life itself. Um, things just were not going right for me for a long time. And um, th- th- they did take care of me with um, that, the psychiatrist. You know, I, I was never paying my own money, even if I had money to pay. They made sure that that was um, free to me. So I really, I respect them for that and um, thank them a lot. I guess that loops back into the uh the human side i i read on twitter uh, andy waterman commented uh, and he he uh, highlighted that statement from peter fitzinger of athletics new zealand that this is andy waterman uh his uh tweet impressed that athletic news athletics new zealand are thinking about athlete well-being after a positive test on zane robertson 
the moral fury that surrounds doping can be medieval. Glad someone is thinking about the person's long-term health. And then someone commented, totally agree. Doping needs to be called out for what it is, cheating fraud. The perpetrator needs to be supported as they can learn to cope with the consequences. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I think that those are good comments. They're coming at, um, you know, it's like uh, like I made my last one of my last posts. Is Are we athletes first or are we human beings first? And some people forget that we are human first. Humans make mistakes and unfortunately elite athletes are called out and just judged for everything in the in the limelight and it's and it's really hard emotionally but coming off the background of what's been happening for, to me the last two years or so anyway um um i was in i was in a very vulnerable place before this and now i'm even in a worse place um recently i've just i've just been in a car accident as well and I have internal bleeding on the left side of my brain. So I'm lucky to be alive. Part of me kind of wonders just would it, would it have been better for me to just go out in that crash because I wouldn't have had to deal with this. I mean, that crash was only a few weeks ago, I believe. Car crash. Um, it, was, it was two months ago to, to now. Uh, and you're still sporting the scars on your forehead of that, uh, that head wound. It was decent. Yeah, that's why I'm wearing the hat around a lot. Um, it's healing and um, super, superficial scars will, will heal, but um, the, the blood in the brain will take a while longer. Zane, the media broke the story. The running community is small internationally. doesn't take long for the word to spread. How long, how long had you been waiting for that to hit? hit the media like you're aware that that was going to go live for how long three months two months six months since basically since i was notified in september i knew that this this isn't good and this might not end good i just you know what can you do but hope and that's why i tried to cover my ass so i've known since then that this was a reality and this probably will happen and it, it's made me anxious it's caused a lot of stress um a lot of dark moments again and um i mean some of some of the support team back in new zealand they knew about these moments and uh i i don't know how to feel about i don't know how to feel about a lot of things that um have been said and done yeah i imagine the anxiety would be very heightened basically waiting to feel entirely discredited yeah, I mean, lo athletics and running for me became an identity as well. And it was just who I was, Zane the runner. And um, it means so much more to me because I put like, I don't know, a whole lot more than normal people would just into the sport. Moving here and part of me wonders if I'd made, if I've made like wrong choices from the start, just investing my life into the sport because it led me to this dark tunnel and it led me to this path of making this decision and ending in such a way and i just wonder what what if i just led a normal life where would i be now um maybe i'd be better off maybe i wouldn't have been in such a stressful position and faced such hardships so it sounds like your regrets are stemming back further than the doping incident but they're all ceased you're even partially regretting pursuing the professional running path i mean as a as a kid you always you always are full of dreams and hopes and you don't know how dark it is until you actually enter the high end and it took many many years to enter that high end of professional sport and then you start to see things a lot more clearly and then realize like what it is and um i really started to hate the professional sport side of things before making this decision um part of me wishes i'd just retired and and left on a high which probably might have been after the olympics um it would have been the right way to go just saying i just don't i don't love the professional side of this anymore and i really do still love running i run every day just for my mental health um i run every day 
to to have my own fitness and keep keep a better quality of life. And um, you know, I I really wanted to start my own coaching business as well, just to encourage fun runners. I don't really want to coach elite runners. I want to coach fun runners to improve and to feel the benefits of running and um, just see great improvements. Do you think that door is closed now, or you'd like to hope that that coaching opportunity can still be there? I, I believe it's still I still there. I mean, what more can they do to me? There's a sport in the end. It's not a it's not a legal crime or an illegal crime. So there's no criminal court of law. But the way I see it is I'm banned for life anyway. So I'm going to face that. I can't have the joy of racing professionally anymore. But I maybe can have the joy of one day again running as a fun runner or running with the people I coach and helping them achieve their best. And I still get joy out of that type of thing. I still get joy out of seeing other people improve as well. As you said, you're still running. It's part of who you are. And I mean, I've often thought <laughs> I don't have the talent to have ever realized a professional running career. Uh, and most don't. But the insights my professions afforded me of high performance sport, uh, I, I know the pressures I experienced that I may mostly put on myself as a recreational athlete and the heartache of injury or the injury cycle. And I often coach myself through my own disappointment with any injuries I've had by thinking, man, imagine if this was my living and my sponsorship relied on my body, <laughs> how much more pressure and stress would it produce? I think it's worthwhile people, people thinking about that distinction and, you know, professional sport versus recreational. It's Gosh, I could see myself if I was a professional athlete losing the joy of it quite easily. I think, yeah, with my, with my personality, I'm 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 prone to anxiety. Oh yeah, I think I think a lot of us are prone to anxiety. Um, I had a friend out here recently who helped me a lot with that, and just coming to terms with a lot of things that I'm facing in life, not just um, not just the this doping case. And I think if people take that walk in my shoes, I mean, a lot of them might shun me anyway for it and say, oh, I wouldn't have done the same. But you you can't say that. If you're, if you're out here and you're a 31, you're a 33 year old man and you want to have a family one day, maybe you want to live in another country. New Zealand's expensive as hell now. I can't afford it. And And you're going broke and your sponsors are leaving you. And there's no more race winnings. And, and then you're wondering, how will I even afford a ticket to get home? What, what, would you, what would you do? I mean, you have to really dig down deep and say, yeah, maybe maybe I'd make the same mistake. Do you think you would have retired at 33 if it wasn't for the doping violations, eh? Uh, I went through a lot of... A lot of times where I was considering and contemplating retirement after the Olympics. And uh, I think, honestly, I just couldn't see a way forward in life other than the, the way I, uh, I've been living. And I think that's why I just didn't. I wish I had of and I wish I'd taken like maybe two years, maybe four years and done my schooling again and finished the things that, you know, other things in life then maybe I could have come back to running again with a fresh mind and just found that joy again that I had for the professional side of it. Mm. And if you had your time again, <clears throat> sounds like that's the path you'd take. Yeah, I, I think I made a mistake there. And I, I shouldn't have, I should have definitely not taken drugs. I should have held my head high, walked away from the sport for a while, come back again to the Gold Coast and just said I fucking love you again you know there's some of my good memories of this life are like yeah I hope those memories are my fans and just um or not for this end in my career so in final few questions uh have people around you in the athletic space reached out or did they know they that know. this was going to go live uh or is there sort of a, a code of silence amongst your your professional running peers? Um, a, f a few people that I haven't, I didn't expect to reach out to me, actually reached out 
to me in such a kind way. Like, I think they've suffered anxiety as well and suffered stress. A professional athletes, a lot of people go through this in silence. They don't reach out. They don't have support from their peers because this is the hidden sadness of the sport. And I did get a few messages where people said kind words to me like, Zane, we're really, really sorry you have to go through this. And, um, you know, everyone has the right to redemption and um, such things like this. So I really respect those athletes who came out to me and said such things. And, and I know there will be those that just think I was on it my whole career and just judge me and just want to talk, speak out. And um, those are the type of people that I just don't have the time of day for because in the end, you're doomed if you do and you're doomed if you don't. Um, people believed and said things about me my whole career anyway that I was on, on the juice and that I was on drugs and I wasn't. So it was, it was very emotionally and mentally straining on me anyway. So I have no time a day for the, for the athletes who are messaging me or saying things about me in, un, in another way. And what are the next steps for you now? Uh, have you got a, a roadmap or are you just living day by day at the moment? I'm, I'm living day by day at the moment. I, I've um, passed my, my course in sports nutrition and I'm halfway there with my personal training course. And I'm just looking forward now to more education and more tunnels of opportunity and just bettering myself in the education department. Um, I'm looking, looking forward to maybe coaching a lot of fun runners to their best they can be. And um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't really planned for what's next. I'm living day to day a little bit. And obviously you've mentioned there, Zane, that there's regrets and you've shared some of the context, a lot of the context to your decision. Have you forgiven yourself? You've had time knowing this is going to go live. I, I don't think I have. I think, uh, I think it's going to take a very long time for that to happen. Um, I think every day that I'm going to be looking in the mirror, I'm going to remember. And as long as I have memories of what I was and what I've done, um, the good memories of what I've done in sport, then I'm going to hate myself for quite a long time. And you think time will heal that? I hope so. I hope so. You know, they say that it does. So I hope that um, with time and with the right, the right way forward, and the right opportunities to do the right things, then um, I can come through this um, a better person as well. Zane, uh, thank you for stopping by. Uh, this has been obviously very tough. This has been a very tough 48 hours for you. And uh, obviously it would have been nice to not reconnect under these circumstances, but um, personally, thank you for for sharing and uh and obviously yeah there's a journey ahead so um so thanks mate for stopping by i always uh, a pleasure in fortunate circumstances but i hope everyone out there can um forgive me for my mistakes just like any other human who makes a mistake outside of elite sports you know thanks so much zane thanks brad see you